Cheers. Well, we haven't done a blowy day in Bangor for a while, have we, Beverly? No, but it was a particularly really not pleasant one the other day. So what we did was we stayed in and cooked ourselves up a big fry. <laughs> You know, yeah. it was comfort food, comfort food all the way. It worked as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good. And then we've since had some sunny weather. Oh, yeah. So well, we, we started getting the boat prepped for a sail. So <laughs> but by the time Gaynor came back from doing her little job, and by the time I finished cleaning the boat again, the weather's getting up. So we've decided just to drink coffee instead. <laughs> But so unfortunately that does mean to say you're going to have one of our salty last rambles. Yep, it looks like it's going to be a salty last ramble today. And what we thought we'd talk about today is why do book projects never end? I have got a, this is my board and this is my list of jobs to do. One or two jobs. And I was really proud of myself. I got rid of a job for those on you, the board. For those of you in IT, this is not our Agile philosophy. This is not a scrum board. <laughs> this is not the daily stand up. Carry on. <laughs> I was really proud of myself and I got rid of a job on the board. And then I just thought about it for two seconds and I put two more stickers on the board. <laughs> yeah. You see, I'm of the opinion, possibly unpopular that it is that the reason boat jobs never end is because you're still alive this is my yeah, yeah this, so is, my this is beverly's uh, terminal philosophy my terminal philosophy you want boat jobs to end wait until you're interred in the cemetery i guarantee you there will be none but if you're alive and kicking and you're not the sort of person who is a complete couch potato who never ever moves for anything then you will always have jobs to do. They may not be boat jobs, but there are always jobs. If you own a boat, guess what some of your time is going to be? It's going to be boat jobs because you own a boat. Mm. If you don't own a boat, it's going to be car jobs. If you don't own a car, it's going to be housework jobs. You it's know. going to be something because like even when I was a kid and I had no jobs. You were young once. I was young once and I was a kid. I was a right tomboy, just in case you... Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you didn't think, guess that I was a tomboy. Oh dear. <laughs> that um, you know, people would come back from holiday from the school holidays and say that they were bored, and I was thinking, I was never once bored because I always found stuff to do. Mm. You know, I found trees to climb or um, places to go, little activities to do. But I've got that I kind of imagination. That means that I can always think of something to do. I'm always reminded of Russia's drummer Neil Peart, who was being described by many as the greatest rock drummer who has ever been. And he had two statements which I find incredible. He said he'd never been bored a day in his life because there was always so much to do. Yeah. And he then said he wasn't talented, he was just relentless. He just never stopped. Yeah, he was always trying to better himself. And I would say that that is very true of Salty Lass. I mean, you see, Salty Lass is a great boat, but we've never done wanting to make her better or well, you did point do out, something the other day just to make her improve her. You did point out about the bulkhead. I mean, we didn't need to varnish the bulkhead, not really. It, it wasn't a crucial job. The boat, the boat doesn't sail any better now we've done it. No, but also... <laughs> dark it sails worse because she doesn't move as much. <laughs> But also, um, you know, I know people who would have left that for another at least three or four seasons before they did it. Mm. But we're the kind of people who want to keep Salty Lass looking good. We want her to... We well, do want to live in a dump. Well, exactly, because we do live on Salty Lass, so... I don't want know. my boat to look like an absolute hole. I want it to look nice. You know, and so that's part of the, the people we are. We're the kind of people who want the place to look good um, and uh, want to keep everything up to the best standard we can. And because of that, we're always trying to improve Salty Lass, aren't we, Bevy? Right then, so are we trying to attain perfection and is it fool's gold? <sighs> no, 
And the only reason that we're not trying to uh, achieve a perfection is that we have a saying on Salty Laughs, and that is that perfection is the enemy of the good. Mm. Um, if you're always striving that this has got to be perfect, um, say for instance you wanted the boat perfect before you went out, then... <laughs> <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no boat would ever leave dock if you did that. Exactly, that's the point. It would never leave dock. I have actually seen a perfect boat round here. Really? And and it doesn't move much at all. It stays in dock. But the fenders are at precisely oh. 13 centimetres off the tail. Oh, and, uh, 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 <laughs> I know the boat she means and I'll have to agree. It is the nearest thing I have ever seen to a perfect boat. It's, I mean, all the fenders, like she says, are exactly the same height. All the ropes are exactly the same colour. Yeah. You know, the, the varnish work is perfect. Yeah. Um, all, all the canvas work is spotless all the time. All, all the time. But I can tell you now, it doesn't move much. All, all, the, all the little things that you use to put the elastic bands and hold the canvas covers over the windows, they're all precisely the same distance apart. There's no variation. There's no slight up and down. I mean, it, it, it's a work of perfection, but I don't know if it actually ever sails anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and then afraid to get the anchor dirty. <laughs> yeah, but this is the whole point. If you yeah. have something that is absolutely perfect, then you're never going to get out. Admittedly, at the moment, we've not got can, out can, can, we, can we go on in the side at this point? Mm -hmm. Vanity anchors. Ugh. You know where somebody spends two grand on a beautiful polished stainless steel anchor and then you've got to throw it overboard on the rocky bottom Ooh. and it all goes it's you know it's going to come up all scratched to death no all, all messed up i mean if you have a vanity anchor do you or i'm turning on its head would a vanity anchor only appear in a boat that never anchors because you don't dare drop it on the bottom in case you scratch it i would say that because steel anchors have got some properties which are quite good. Yeah, but I'm talking about the big, highly polished stainless steel beauties that you see that cost like two, three grand a piece. I have seen those polished steel ones on, but I would say that they don't go down very often. <laughs> so our old rusty beat up one. <laughs> Trust me, it's been used a bit. <laughs> But would having a perfect anchor like that put you off, do you think? Would, would, if you had a perfect anchor like that, would you be afraid to drop it on the bottom of the sea? This is the whole point of the problem with perfection. If something is perfect, then I would say that you're a bit concerned about using it. You know, you've got to use it. One of, one of the reasons that we bought a 20-year-old boat is A, it was a lot cheaper than a new one, obviously. Uh, B, although we didn't know this at the time, um, we've seen a lot of new ones being bought and they seem to have an awful lot of problems for new boats. Well, yes. But so this one had a proven record. It did have a proven record, but for me, um, is this, when you is buy this a new... Is this C coming up? We've done A and B, is this nice C? No, it's just the fact that when you do buy a new boat, um, there will always be stuff that you want to, to do. Because it's not going to be your perfect boat until you do a few loads of projects. Okay, and I, I would I, be I scared. Can, I, can, I, I can now bring up point C. I would be scared to put a hole in the boat. I really would. Oh, you stole my point. Sorry, Beth. <laughs> I was going to say, I've seen these things and they're beautifully varnished and the rest of it. And then you've got to like drill a hole in it to put like a, a saddle on or a piece of stainless steel fittings. Would you do it on a brand new boat? I mean, brand, I mean like, you know, two weeks ago, it was in the factory and now you're drilling holes in it you just spent 150,000 on it. Well your guarantee's toast isn't it for a start you know because it's now... We know, somebody who had a, we know somebody who had a boat custom built, mm. Stephen in Liverpool mm. and the first thing you had to do was put extra winch, extra winch clamps in, <laughs> extra rope clamps. Yeah. I think it took him an hour to drill the first hole. <laughs> well that's what I mean if you have something that's perfect you're not going to use it. On a 20 year old boat you know well i want to use it i want to use salty lass and i'd prefer to be using it now but never mind you're having a salty lass ramble instead <laughs> you are and you were also commenting on left to feel things things that come out of nowhere and just go oh yeah like you weren't um, expecting that but here you I know am. 
like I would say that this is my boat list of projects. These are the things I plan to do. But the batteries were definitely a left of field project. I was not expecting them, but apparently I was expecting them in she, a way. Yeah, because they're five years old. They're, they're going to go sooner or later. Five years old. I mean, they're going to go. It's just it's batteries, isn't it? It's like the fridge. I think the compressor in here is the original that was fitted in the factory. So if it was, it's a 20 year old fridge. How many fridges last 20 years? And I can tell you now, we use ours all the time. time. People say, how often do you switch your fridge on? A more pertinent question for us would be, how often do you switch it off? Exactly. But, but you know, so that fridge will go. One day it will go bang and that will be the end of it. But we have been told how to spot replacement time. Yeah. Apparently they start to smell. Apparently they really stink before they blow up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Um, you know, so there were things like that. Mm. You know, we're not expecting it to go boom next week, but we are expecting it to go boom sometime because it's old. Yeah. Well, like all old things, it's time is approaching. Yeah, things wear out. I mean, say, you know, We've replaced all sorts of stuff on here on Salty Last just because... Well, look at your knees, you can barely bend down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting Walter all on and so you can stand up. Yeah, I've damaged my knees already and it's like, oh my God. You're only 60. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the soundtrack for this isn't too noisy because uh, it's turned a bit windy. We were going to go out this afternoon, but the wind has come up, hasn't it? Yeah, this is one of the reasons it was sort of like, oh, the biggest problem is when you go to a job and then you come back and we still had yet another hour of prep to do because uh, we did and um, my enthusiasm gland was reduced. It's just... Oh. I can understand people living on land having trouble getting to their boats because living on land is interfering with me getting to my boat and I live on it. Mm. Yeah. Just uh, being close to land is uh, interfering with... I saw a, a post by somebody on Facebook who said that she did a six week passage from somewhere to somewhere um, on a big boat somewhere and after six weeks at sea um, she got off it and within a couple of days of being back on land she was aching all over. <laughs> It's just like it's like being on land is sore compared to being at sea. <laughs> and I know what she means. I don't know about the soreness, but certainly when we do get off, we, we, we do notice the lack of movement and things like that. Oh, I, I get land sick all the time. I've, I've never got seasick. I've got ill because of diesel, because I'm not very uh, a big fan of diesel. And when it's throw, going into the cockpit, Oh, diesel space. And, um, you know, because you, you're having to motor and the wind is pushing it into the cockpit. I know we haven't spent 50 grand on a, on an electric engine and electric batteries and electric whatnots, but we're not really fans of diesel. It's just that it's there and it works very much. But yeah. if, there, if there was a magic nuclear reactor you could put in that would push you around the oceans and cost no more than a diesel, I'd have it. <laughs> well, it doesn't work that way. At least not for sailboats. <laughs> no, and I'm not certainly not going to buy a generator just to power the uh, batteries so that I can use the batteries to... I'm afraid to say, because uh, I was an engineer, I always look to uh, reducing inefficiency. Um, and that to me is just inefficient to so then, charge the battery to... Have we been efficient? Have we answered the question of why book jobs never end? Um. The only thing we were also thinking was maybe discussing some of our projects that we have done in the past, but we've they're in the blog. They're in the blog, they're on the video. They are what they are. So and have we answered the question of why boat jobs never end? Not too sure, but... Uh, I think we have. You know, it's just, it's you, what kind of person you are. If you can see jobs coming up, then, you know... If that's one thing if you're drawing breath <laughs> yeah and then gonna... the boat jobs are never going to end <laughs> <laughs> they do say there's only one thing worse than getting old and that's not, not getting, getting old, old. <laughs>